welcome to Info Hub. In our headlines, the summit of the Americas continues, the economy grew by 2.1%, and draft updated legislation for intellectual property rights being proposed. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. The Ministry of Finance has announced a tax amnesty, effective January 1 to September 30, 2018. This means that you can pay all your outstanding income, property, corporate, capital gains, and withholding taxes. File your taxes before June 30, 2018, and all interest and penalties will be waived. Or file before September 30, 2018, and pay only 50% of the interest and penalties accrued. Invest in your country. Pay your taxes. A message from the Ministry of Finance and the Guyana Revenue Authority. We begin the news with a report that Guyana's economic performance remained positive despite performing slightly below projections. Paul McAdam has the details. At his first 2018 media briefing, Finance Minister Winston Jordan revealed that the gross domestic product grew by about 2.1 percent for the 2016 to 2017 fiscal year. This lower than expected result occurred from poorer than initially projected sector performances. Uh, sugar we had, that we had budgeted at 208,000 tons came in at only 137,307 tons. Rice did quite well. We had budgeted 600,000 tons. Uh, rice came in at 630,104 tons. Bauxite, that again, that also didn't do quite well. We had budgeted 1,726,008 uh, tons. Bauxite came in at 1,000,000 459,223 tons. Minister Jordan added that gold's performance was disappointing. Gold was we budgeted at 694,000 ounces. Uh, gold came in at 653,674 ounces. 653, uh, 674. And forestry did reasonably well. The forestry sector is now showing signs of recovery after uh, lapse over the last, the previous two years. Uh, forestry, we budgeted 318,000 cubic meters. Forestry came in at 349,900 cubic meters. According to the minister, the economy has not changed much over the last five decades as it continually depended on the performances of one or two main products, which in turn relied on the international prices paid for them. He cited rice as one example. Trinidad bought our rice at unbelievable um, prices, so to speak, and that caused um, production to expand as usual. As you uh, know by now, the Venezuela market is uh, no longer available officially. Officially, the Venezuela market is no longer available, and therefore um, the rice industry um, de declined a little bit, but in a short space of time, it is able to rebound to such an extent that this year, um, we're looking, hopefully, at significant improvement, even on the 2017. And for the first crop already, you would have noticed um, in the papers that it has been doing um, quite well. Minister Jordan added that fiscal revenues remained exceptionally buoyant and expenditure was held in line. This, he noted, has resulted in a deficit to GDP, which is less than the previous fiscal year and slightly smaller than projected, which he explained that in any scenario is good news. Paul McAdam for InfoHub. The 8th Summit of the Americas is underway in Lima, Peru. Tiffany Rogers is there and tells us that the Canadian Prime Minister hosted a working luncheon for CARICOM representatives. Here are the details. The current chairman of CARICOM, President of Haiti, Jovenel Moise, and the former chairman, Prime Minister from Grenada, Keith Mitchell, have been invited by Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to attend this year's G7 summit. For me, it was extremely important to bring forward uh, leadership from the Caribbean, which is why we have both the current and the next uh, president of Caricom who are going to be joining us at the G7 uh, leaders meeting uh, in the uh, extended meetings. Because for me, the opportunity uh, to use Canada's voice on the world stage to bring forward issues that matter to our friends uh, is one of the most important things uh, in our approach 
uh, to international relations. Prime Minister Trudeau today met with heads of state from Caracom at a working luncheon ahead of this evening's Summit of the Americas open here in Lima, Peru. And this lunch for me is an opportunity to hear uh, from all of you uh, on uh, your perspectives on uh, how Canada can help and on what uh, issues and how uh, you feel we can work best uh, as we move forward together. The G7 summit is being hosted by Canada in Quebec later in June. Reporting from Lima, Peru for InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Stakeholders today received a holistic briefing on Ghana's preparation for the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force's fourth round of mutual evaluation. Here is Stefan Gabriel. At the seminar, the Attorney General Basil Williams highlighted the need for Guyana's preparation and the need to be successful. Where we are is that we are in the fourth round of mutual evaluation. And how we got here is too painful to recount right now. What I can assure you is that if we don't prepare ourselves and execute, you'll be back in the hole. That's Trinidad is right now. So we have to get it right. And it looks as though time is, we have a lot of time. We don't have a lot of time. There are a lot, there's a lot of things to do. And therefore, you have to know from the outset in your particular niche what you're required to do. Speaking on Guyana's technical compliance and effectiveness rating, the AG noted that this deals with convictions for money laundering and Guyana cannot progress from the fourth round unless convictions are shown. And therefore, the FIU and SOCO are both put on notice because they both know how they measure effectiveness. And that has to do with convictions. And so there's no way we could graduate out of the fourth round without showing convictions. The fourth round deals with the 40 recommendations and immediate outcomes. The seminar looked at the Financial Action Task Force recommendations and methodologies, requirements of the fourth round of mutual evaluation, procedures for CFATF's fourth round of mutual evaluation, requirements to collect and maintain AML, CFT data and statistics, it also addressed the expectations of the Financial Investigative Agency in the fight against money laundering and terrorism financing. Guyana is set for evaluation in the fourth quarter of 2021. For InfoHub, Stefan Gabriel. Business Minister Dominic Gaskin has assured officials in the Pomeroon Supernam area that his ministry will work to provide solutions to issues affecting the business community and residents of the area. Natisha Isaacs has more. Minister Gaskin made the commitment during a visit to Region 2 on Thursday. Among those areas discussed were issues within the fishing industry, tourism, small business production and packaging, and the access to finance programs. During the interactive session, Anna Regina resident and agro-processor Abiola Garraway said the issues could be addressed through ministerial initiatives. My problem is, is training, financing and equipment. That's our main problem. We see a lot of programs go on in Georgetown, through this um, Georgetown Chamber of Commerce, nothing really comes this remote. We get a lot of workshops, but the workshops are all good, but we need training. And I would like if your um, ministry can assist us, if not all of us, a few of us, because we really need training. Minister Gaskin committed to sending a team from the Small Business Bureau to engage the Chamber of Commerce. He noted the meeting will also include the agro-processors. It is easy for us to send a team from the Small Business Bureau to visit the, ch um, the chamber and you can call all the agro-processors to that meeting and we can discuss it and arrange for some training sessions. Um, they can explain to you how, um, what are some of the ways you can access financing and the training sessions should include issues such as the appropriate equipment that you need. Minister Gaskin encouraged the entrepreneurs to work along with the government towards finding the solutions. For their part, the residents expressed satisfaction with the minister's visit and said they look forward to seeing actions on the issues discussed. For InfoHub, Leticia Isaacs.
Zinni Williams tells us that a draft updated legislation for intellectual property rights is slated to be on the legislative agenda this year, as well as educational outreaches for citizens. IPR is a right that is had by a person or by a company to have exclusive rights through patents, copyrights and trademarks. These IPRs allow the holder to exercise a monopoly on the use of the item for a specified period. Chief Parliamentary Counsel at the Ministry of Legal Affairs, Charles Fongofat SC, noted though Guyana's laws are outed, moves are being made to update them. On this year's legislative agenda, we put the copyright properly in place there, you know. So we can all breathe a little easier, you know. We have to call, we have to use these names of anachronism and archaic, you know. But the, the bill is long in the making, yet it's more modern than the other Caribbean graphs at, at the time. This observation was made during a panel discussion by the U.S. Embassy on the importance of intellectual property rights protection for the development of the nation's economy. Panelists included Enrico Wolford, Ruel Johnson, Vishnu Durga, Marion Williams, Dominic Hunter, Gavin Mandanza, and Minister of Public Telecommunications, Catherine Hughes. Members of the public who attended were eager to share their opinions. Many of the perspectives highlighted current challenges facing Guyanese creators and business persons and the ways in which they believe it can be addressed. Gavin Mendonza said he believes education is key and the need to give artists and creative persons the respect due. What's lacking in Guyanese society as a whole from the top, the chambers of parliament, all the way down to homeless people on the street and passerbys is we seem to lack respect and appreciation for each other and for ourselves. You have to respect yourself before you can respect others. You have to respect your own work before you can respect other people's work. That's one. Um, so we need, to, we need to give people opportunities, not necessarily teach them how to respect and teach them how to appreciate, but give them opportunities to appreciate work. Give them opportunities to respect. Ghana's Copyright Act is dated 1956, and its Trademark Act and Patents and Design Act are dated 1973. Ghana joined the World Intellectual Property Organization and acceded to the Bernie and Paris Conventions in late 1994. Attempts have been made to update the law prior to 2018, but these never made it to the Parliament. Zanil Williams for InfoHub. We end with this Isaiah Braffitt report. He tells us that an international company contracted to investigate mercury emissions at the Ghana Gold Board has completed its preliminary work. The work was carried out by Kaizen Environmental Services Limited, a Trinidadian company. Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman said that even though the reports from the company is not alarming, the health and well-being of all staff and residents in the neighborhood is paramount. Minister Trotman noted that steps will be taken to ensure that such an incident does not occur in the future. I am proposing uh, an expert's review of the functions of the Gold Board's lab to see how it can be made to better function, where it should be situated, um, what uh, scientific and other methodology should be used and deployed to ensure that safety comes first for the border workers in the lab and those who are around the lab. It was also disclosed by General Manager of the Gold Board, Eon Dwayne Thompson, that they have also consulted with Activation Lab, a local company who will be assisting with the issue. The representative came and he had done a walkthrough of the system. He recommended that we have two monitors, one to the port or before the, uh, when, when there is burning of the, the metal, and also at the exit, we would want to say the chimney. We will have two monitors there, and he is going to bring those two equipment in. And uh, this is what we have been doing at the Guyana Gold Board to ensure the safety of our staff and GGMCs also. Chairman of the Gold Board, Gabriel Lal, explains why such actions are being taken. We are overcompensating. We are, this is a continuous process for us, and we want to give ourselves and the people outside there, everybody, everybody, whatever radius it is, as the minister said, that we are going above and beyond 
to put layers and layers of this thing, of this inspection, inspection of testing, of, of results, etc., that we have got a comfort level to an extreme degree. The intervention by the government comes after workers of the Guyana Gold Board and the Guyana GLGM Mines Commission have been exposed to high levels of mercury emissions coming from the works of the Gold Board. Isaiah Brafitt, InfoHub. Check our website or Facebook page for more details as we bring you updates and developments across Guyana and further afield. Thanks for watching and remember to connect with us 24-7 on our website and social media. Goodbye. The taxes we pay provide revenue for the government to use to develop and improve our country's infrastructure and the life of all Guyanese. If we pay our taxes, the government will be able to build more roads, schools, hospitals, bridges and other government facilities. The government will also be able to use those funds to pay better wages and salaries to public servants and to improve government services. This will help to attract more investors to our country, create jobs, and reduce poverty. Let's invest in our country. Pay your taxes. A message from the Ministry of Finance and the Guyana Revenue Authority.